Yes, yes, you, yes, you're beautiful. I love you too, mushy, mushy. Kissy, kiss. Oh, gotta go. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? <laughs> hey, isn't technology awesome? I wasn't really talking to anybody, but technology is pretty cool. If I wanted to call somebody sitting here at my desk in school, I could use this phone and with just a button and a couple presses of the numbers, I could call somebody in another state. I could call somebody in California on the other side of the United States and they would pick up like that and we could have a conversation or I could type in some words and send them a text. And that would be amazing too. They could talk text right back to me. I can push another button and let's see. Just I can. Well, I was going to listen to some music, but it's an advertisement. Um, I could look at some pictures that I took. Um, um, hey, there's a picture of me in my suit at a wedding. <laughs> what else? Uh, we can look at pictures on this. So. Technology is pretty awesome, but what is technology? What is, what is it? Well, that's what today's lesson is all about. It's called, oh, let me shrink myself again. It's called, what is technology? And we are on page 79 in your science book. So I'd like you to get it out and follow along. And uh, this is kind of a longer lesson. We're going to talk about a lot of things today, but it's a lot of cool things. Now look at this robot. You ever seen a robot riding a bicycle? Well, this one can, and he can ride a bike and not even fall over. I would say you can do that too, but we're a little more complicated than a robot, I guess. I never th thought I would see a robot riding a bicycle, but that's a type of technology. Engineers have designed a robot that can sit on a bicycle and not fall over and ride a bike. I think I'd be a little scared if I saw him go by, wouldn't you? Let's find out more about technology. Tools rule. Look in your desk or at home. Do you see pens and pencils, scissors, a ruler? All of these things are tools. You may not think about it, but they are. Pencils and pens, they're writing tools. Scissors are cutting tools. A ruler is a measuring tool. A bulldozer and a shovel serve the same purpose. However, because of a bulldozer's size, it can move, move huge amounts of material much more quickly than a shovel can. Planting a vegetable garden? You'll need a shovel, a rake, and a spade. All of these items are tools. A tool is anything that helps people shape, build, or produce things meet their needs. To meet their needs. Your family's toolbox probably contains a hammer and screwdrivers. Construction workers have similar tools that do the same jobs, only on a larger scale. Instead of hammering nails by hand, construction workers use tools that quickly drive nails into the wood with a push of a button. Their tools are sized and powered differently to meet different needs. Does your dad have a toolbox? Maybe your mom? Are they, is your dad, dad the tool man, Taylor? Some of you know what that is. It's an old show on TV. Some tools are designed to do one task. You use a pen to write a note to a friend. You keep a science notes organized in a notebook. You talk to your grandmother on the phone. What if you had one tool that could do all these tasks? A smartphone is a tool that can help you send a message, organize information, and talk to people. A smartphone, like all tools, is an example of technology. Technology is any design, system, product, or process that people use to solve problems. Technology doesn't have to be complex. The pencil you write with and the cell phone you text with are both technology. Technology changes as the needs of people change. Suppose you're building a birdhouse. How will you make each side straight? How will you cut through the wire? How will you secure the nuts and bolts? Tools can help you solve these problems. Okay, moving on. And what's technology? Vending machines, television, video games are examples of technology. Products you know, but there are more. Technology is all around you. A video game is the end product of a technology process. Programming a video game involves technology you can't hold in the palm of your hand. You've learned that technology is any designed system, product, or process. A technology product is anything designed to meet a need or desire. Hey, you might want to underline that because you know there's going to be some vocabulary today. 
Some people think that electronics are the only type of technology product. However, most technology products do not use electricity. What? Most technology products do not use electricity. Let's read on. This book, the desk is on it. The desk it is on and the backpack you use to take it home are all technology products. Your bike and the sidewalk you ride on, ride it on are technology products too. Technology products can be very large or very small. They can be a single thing like a stone brick or made of many things put together. Some technology products, such as medicine, are made to keep us healthy. Others, such as construction tools, are made to shape the world around us. We also invent technology products just to have fun. Circle three examples of technology in this photo. Well, she's got like a little Game Boy here. There's one. She's got a headset on. She's got a watch on. Glasses. That's the type of technology to help her see better, right? There's some technology in that prod picture. The way a product is made is also a form of technology. A technology process looks like a vocabulary word is a series of steps used to achieve a goal or a product. The steps in a technology process are like the steps in a scientific investigation. They're carefully designed for doing something in a certain way. Many things you do are a technology process. You follow a series of steps to make gelatin dessert, tie your shoelaces, and add music to your MP3 player or your cell phone. If you have ever played baseball, then you're familiar with its rules. The rules of a game are a technology process. Remember that technology process is a series of steps. A process is a series of steps. A technology process is a series of steps used to achieve a goal or make a product. Safety gear and clothing are type of technology that help baseball players perform. The bleachers and the backstop are types of technology that let spectators watch safely. Technological systems. In this factory, there are tools, robots, computers, and people. They all make up a system. I bet if your parent works in a factory, maybe like Molly or somewhere like that, then they have all these technological systems in their factory where they work in. They might can tell you about some of the cool ones there. The next time you ride in a car, Look at how many parts it has. It has many tools and hundreds of steps to produce. It took many tools and hundreds of steps to produce this technology. Groups of things that work together to achieve a goal make up a system. That's another vocabulary word there. I'm going to highlight it. Tools, parts, and processes that work together form a design system. There's another one. There we go. So tools, parts, and processes that work together form a design system. And a system is groups of things that work together. Design systems help us travel and ship goods. They help us communicate and grow our foods. You're a part of many design systems. Whether you ride the bus or walk to school or watch do your lessons online, you're part of a transportation system if you ride the bus to school or, or if you walked. This system is made up of the sidewalks, roads, traffic signs. It also includes cars, buses, planes, and trains that move people and material from place to place. Any type of transportation is part of a transportation system. Design systems help us shape the world around us. When you ride around town, you might see cars, roadways, buildings, or farm fields. All these things make up the designed world. The design world is part of the is the part of your community that's designed and built by people. Many design systems work together in the designed world. For example, the agricultural system produces the food that we need. Ships, trains, and trucks in the transportation system carry food where it is needed. So we've got those systems here. The agricultural system, they produce the food. There's one system but the transportation system ships the food where it needs to go. There's another system. Let's look at parts of a design system. A water irrigation system is a tool that helps farmers grow crops. It includes water, 
hoses, and pipes. It also includes the people who run the system and fix it when it breaks down. Parts of a design system, the part and example. A goal, it's what the system aims to do. For a rail transportation system, the goal would be to move cargo and passengers safely from place to place. The input is what is put into the system to meet the goal. An example of a transport train, a trail train system would be fuel for the train, the cargo, and people to ride the train. That all goes into the system. Processes, they describe how the goal is to be achieved. What about with the train system? Train tracks and departure and arrival schedules. You gotta have the tracks. You gotta have the time when it's gonna leave and when it's gonna get there. The output is what the end product is. A rail system, the output might be safe and timely delivery of people and cargo. Feedback, that's information that tells whether or not the output's put is successful. On a train system, it would record whether the trains left and arrived on time. So parts of a design system. A railroad system includes trains, rails, and safety signals at road crossings. The system also has parts you can't see. Radio signals keep track of where trains are. The signals raise and lower crossing arms, too. Hmm. It's a lot of parts, aren't there? The good and the bad of it. A light bulb that can save you $100 a year. What's the catch? <laughs> Compact fluorescent lights, or CFLs, and light-emitting diodes, LEDs, use less energy than incandescent bulbs. However, CFLs contain mercury, which can be hazardous if the bulbs break open, and LEDs are more expensive than regular light bulbs. So these are improvements. They're better designed bulbs that last longer. The bad of it is they've got some dangerous chemicals in them, and they're more expensive. So there's good and bad to everything. Technology is, <clears throat> excuse me, constantly changing. Anyone can invent or improve a technology product or process. It takes new ideas and knowledge for technology to change. The goal of any new technology is to better meet people's needs. However, new technology can also bring new risks. Changes in technology often involve making things safer, quicker, easier, or cheaper. For example, people once used candles and lanterns to light their homes. These things help people see at night, but they can also cause fires. Electricity and incandescent light bulbs help solve this problem, but this technology also has its risk. We could get electrocuted or even this type of electricity can cause a fire. We burn coal to generate electricity. When coal burns, harmful ash and gases are produced. The potential harm these substances can cause leads to negative feedback. Such feedback helps people think of ways to improve technology. Sometimes the problems with technology are caused by the way people use technology. For instance, pesticides are helpful technology products. They're used to protect people, crops, and farm animals from harmful organisms. However, when used incorrectly, they can contaminate the soil, the water, and the air. Living things exposed to pesticides by accident can get sick and die. Hmm. Airplanes can transport a lot of people at one time. However, they burn a lot of fuel and release pollution into the atmosphere. Engineers redesign airplanes to improve their performance. And then we've got a little table here they're wanting us to look at. Use the data in the table to answer the questions below. So we're comparing a 60 watt equivalent CFL fancy light bulb and a 60 watt equivalent eco incandescent bulb. So this one costs twice as much. This one lasts five times as long or seven times as long, something like that, four to five times as long. Energy cost per year. Wow, it only costs 240 to burn this light bulb. But that one costs $7, so this one's cheaper to use. Total cost over seven years, about $20, closer to $60. How much more is the total cost of the incandescent bulb than a CFL? How much more is the total cost of an incandescent bulb 
Okay, 5650, 1980. Well, we'd have to subtract, wouldn't we? Let's use our rounding skills we've been working on. Let's round to the nearest tens place. We got decimals here, but don't worry about it. Ones, tens. There's a six beside it. We're going to make it go up. So this is about $60. The one in the tens place with a nine, about 20. So this one is about $40 more total cost than this one. How much would your yearly energy cost be if you had 20 CFL bulbs in your home? Yearly energy cost. So cost per year. Well, it's 240 per one bulb per year. If you had 20 bulbs, well, you have to multiply that by 20. What's 20 times two? 40, around $40. Then you're going to have this change multiplied by 22, but we know it's going to be 40 some dollars. Which bulb lasts longer? Obviously, the CFL bulb lasts longer. 2,500 days. Why it matters. Out with the old. Computers, cell phones, and flat screen TVs are fun and useful, but like all technology, electronic gadgets have drawbacks. Electronic technology seems to change at the blink of an eye. New electronic devices rapidly replace old ones. People benefit from new or improved electronic devices, but they also bring new problems. Not long ago, most televisions and computer monitors were large, bulky things. I had a computer like this when I first started teaching. New technology has made these large devices a thing of the past. They have been replaced by thin, lightweight, flat screens. But what do we do with old electronics? Some are taken apart and recycled. However, like the devices shown on this page, most end up in landfills. At landfills, electronics may release harmful chemicals into the environment. Hmm. So older technology was bigger, bulkier, newer is thinner. So what are we going to do with this old stuff? That's a problem, isn't it? This old stuff ends up in the ground and it can release bad chemicals. Electronics are helpful communication, work, and entertainment tools. They can also be a distraction. Some people spend a lot of time playing video games, surely not you guys, or on the internet. Mm -hmm. They send text messages or listen to MP3 players while they're talking with other people. Some might even operate electronics while driving and cause a safety hazard for themselves and others. That's illegal in Tennessee. People can solve these problems. They can set limits on computer and game time. Some of you just went, no, but it's good. They can put the phone away and pay attention to people and driving. Have you ever been talking to somebody and you're just pouring out your heart to them and they're going, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, that's rude, isn't it? Don't need to do that. These are ways to be responsible with technology. So a pros, that means the good stuff about a television. Cons mean the bad stuff. So television can be educational, can provide breaking news quickly. Cons, well, we can sit on the couch all day and get addicted to watching television, be lazy, be a couch potato. It also can hurt our eyes if we look at it for too long. Smartphones, well, a bad thing. It can take time away from doing other activities or being social. It can cause drivers to be a hazard. What's the pros? Well, it, you can contact somebody quickly in an emergency. You can store information on it. You can call people, communicate with people. If you have access to the internet on your smartphone, you can find out information quickly. Video games, they're fun. They can be social with played with others online. Cons, we don't want to quit playing. They draw, they use up all of our time during the day sometimes. And if we stare at the TV too long playing games, it'll hurt our eyes as well. We need to get out and exercise some. All right, so sum it up. So I want you to work on this page in your book. All the answers are at the bottom. But sum it up to help you summarize the lesson. And of course, you're used to this, aren't you? Here's our vocabulary words for this lesson. Designed world, feedback, process, output, technology, input, products, systems, tool. So we've got nine vocabulary words. You're doing a crossword today, kind of. Use the clues below to fill in the words of the puzzle. And if you fill it all in correctly and you look at these red going down, you'll have the answer to this. 
Mara, uh, Maruda boy is a bicycling is a bicycling robot. He can ride forward, backward, and stop without falling over. Where does he get the ability to do it? Get all your answers there, and you'll be able to find it out. Okay. Once you do this, then please go to your assignment page. You're going to have these same nine words with these same nine definitions. So if you have this done and right already, it's an easy 100. Okay, do this, do the page before it, go to your assignment. Have a great weekend.